Hi everybody, uh, I just want to talk to you a little bit about how the cleaner volume oscillator works. Um, I was very excited when I first discovered the cleaner volume oscillator. I was really wanting for something to be a little bit better uh, than just a regular volume oscillator. So I'm going to show you a volume oscillator um, and then I'm just going to do a uh, short cycle of 8 and a long cycle of 16. Um, so you can kind of see how this works. So Basically, uh, you can see that there's uh, the volume oscillator doesn't really tell you uh, the type of volume. Um, so it's a little bit more tricky uh, how to graph uh, positive volume and negative volume at the same time, especially when they're close together. So it is kind of a debate uh, in terms of how to get that uh, calculation. A lot of people say uh, it's kind of like a force vector. So you take price times volume. Um, but it's not so simple if you're more interested in just what the volume's doing. Um, so basically, the volume oscillator tells you just what the volume's doing, um, but it only gives you a relative value of positive. Um, so basically, here you can see there's a lot of volume. Um, and also, you can see there's a little spike in positive volume here, but it doesn't necessarily show positive or negative. Um, so uh, with the Klinger volume oscillator, um, you can see both positive and negative. So basically, an example of that uh, is in here. This is more positive volume. Um, and then in here, you have some negative volume right in here. So basically, that's how this works. Um, now, it's very similar to the MACD, except for uh, I would say it doesn't work exactly the same. You have to think a little bit more about what the white line is doing and the signal line. Uh, or the cleaner, cleaner, <laughs> cleaner line, and then the signal line is doing. So basically, you know that most of the volume's probably been positive uh, if it's above here, uh, at least in the short term. And then in the longer term, you know that it's basically been uh, positive. Um, so you can specify what these values are. I just did 16 for my signal period. I like to use kind of a longer signal period. Um, and then I use a short cycle of 8 and a long cycle of 16, and that's how I got these. Um, it works great for the minute chart. I just like um, thinking about the sun. Uh, it takes about 8 minutes for light to get here from the, uh, from the sun to the earth. So I basically that's why I use 8 minutes on my signal short cycle. And then to respond back, I have 16 minutes from the earth. Um, so basically that's how I like to use this oscillator. I'm trying to do a little bit more uh, think about astronomy when I do some trading. Um, so it helps me think about some other things. Um, so you can see that uh, this is kind of like the sun line here and it kind of goes up and then down and then up and then down. So, um, but basically most of the volume in this area, you can see there's a little couple positive spikes in volume. Now uh, it does drop from time to time depending on what the uh, moving averages uh, so it does work similar to the MACD um, and then uh, so you can't always trust it exactly but you can use these uh, histograms as well to help give you a better idea for what's going on so uh, to kind of compare on um, different uh, so it's basically not it's kind of a lagging indicator a little bit um, so you have to think about that um, as you're trading with it. So let me just give you a quick example of what's going on in a higher time frame here. So basically you can see that there's spikes every day in the volume. Um, you can see that each day is slightly different. Now the nice part with the cleaner volume, you can see that basically this was mostly negative volume this day. This was kind of partially positive and partially negative. Um, and this was almost entirely negative volume. Um, and that's really nice because a regular volume oscillator just tells you positive volume. You see there's more volume. So I really like it a lot um, just for telling volume. Um, you can also use, I really recommend comparing it with a force index, Euler force index, and I can just use a 16 period here um, for this. Uh, and you can see that this also does tell you negative volumes and positive volumes and tells you also the force of it because it multiplies basically the volume times the price. So uh, it is a pretty helpful indicator. Um, I definitely recommend it. It's similar to the price volume trend, I guess, but a little bit more uh, biased towards looking at volume, uh, which is great. So, uh, but I really recommend uh, taking a look at all these, the Klinger volume oscillator, the regular volume, a regular volume oscillator and a Euler force index. No, I'm sorry, there's actually one more one that I want to show you in addition to this 
uh, it's called the Euler Ray in Index, um, and it's super nice. Uh, it gives you kind of it's hard to see on on a bigger chart, but you can also see uh, that it does give you pretty good estimate of this negative volume in here, um, and it gives you uh, the nice part about if you do a zoomed in version of it, uh, like a 15 minute chart and you zoom in on certain ones, you can see that kind of the percentage of positive volume within the negative volume. So uh, it is helpful to think about that. Uh, it's Again, it's kind of an estimate. Um, and you can see that it basically lines up with a force index. Um, so it's very similar to the force index, except for it shows these other uh, internal candles um, that can be helpful. Um, so uh, you can see here it shows, it's a little bit off on some of these, you can see the force index doesn't really show some of the same things that the yield array index does. But uh, it's very helpful uh, for thinking about the volume. Uh, so what I have is I have different views and I have one that's specifically set up for volume. So I basically just look at volume uh, as a separate indicator uh, entirely. So here you can see multiple days. You can kind of separate the other days by the volume here. You can see one, two, three, four days and pretty much five six days so uh and you can tell that this has pretty much been a downtrend down 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 and then it pretty down far down here with a slight light uptrend the other day um so it kind of tells you not only uh like the price uh, but it gives you a good concept of the down trends um and the nice part about uh the uh clinger volume oscillator is you can see the force volume force one doesn't really give you some of the negative spikes in here, so it's hard to see. Um, it does kind of give you that. It gives you the impression that it's working with volume, but it's not uh, exclusively for volume, so that's why you have to use the cleaner volume oscillator. Um, now, the default oscillator comes with different settings. Um, I, like I said, uh, you can kind of tweak those to uh, but if you wanted to try it, uh, HIJK Clinger, and these are the default settings. Sometimes what I can do is just do 16, 32, and 64, and that will basically be the same thing as the default settings. So you can see that the uh, default settings are a little bit different. Um, here you can see that uh, this says mainly mostly negative volume, um, and if we add actual volume onto this, we can compare and see. Where did that add it? Volume. Hmm, not adding it. Uh, so you can see that under that circumstance, this says all negative volume, but it's actually not the case at all. So that's why I like to use my oscillator with the 16A16 settings on this. Um, and that gives me a little bit better picture for both positive and negative volume throughout the day because it's a little bit faster. Um, now, if you want, um, it essentially does tell you positive volume in here, but it doesn't show you above the zero line. Um, and I really like to see it above the zero line um, just for my own sake. Uh, and you can also do these crossings can help you. Um, so you can say, aha, this is mainly mostly negative volume up until about here. That's where the signal crossing was. Uh, now the signal crossing on this other indicator shows it's slightly before, which is a little bit more accurate um, because it's a faster time, faster oscillator. That's basically why uh, you'd use a faster oscillator because you want to look at, but this does show the same similar kind of time frames, but this shows all positive. And then you can see there's a little negative tick right there, uh, which it doesn't quite catch on the uh, main oscillator. So it's a little bit difficult uh, you gotta kind of volume does not work like regular price action so you have to be careful um, when using these uh, volume oscillators especially anyway that's about it i hope you've really enjoyed this study of the clear volume oscillator um, you can also look at again a regular volume oscillator you can see that the spikes do correspond to the same areas um, and then you'd also definitely should look at the uh, elder force index uh, and the elder uh, ray ray index um, as possible as, po as possibilities for looking at uh, volume and what's going on as well and the reason that you know it's volume is busy you can see that it only gets busy 
uh, during the volume busy parts of the day uh, and you can also see that it corresponds to certain negative or positive trends um, here and you can see that it's definitely really related to volume.